What's going on boys? It is your boy Kyle Little back with another video today and today I kind of just want to talk about um, how to practice semen retention and also have a romantic relationship with a partner. Uh, whether that be a woman or a man, that's completely up to you. I don't need to know your business. Um, but, you know, basically today I just want to talk about um, how to go about uh, finding, not only finding a partner that is going to support you in your uh, semen retention, uh, you know, journey, um, but also how to uh, navigate that relationship and uh, maybe, you know, experiment a little bit and try different things that might work for you inside of that relationship alongside of semen retention. Because obviously, there's uh, multiple different ways that you can go about doing this. Um, pure celibacy is one of them where you just, you know, have no um, intimate physical relationship with your partner, uh, which is totally fine. If that's what you want to do, go for it. That's not what I do. That's not how I go about it. That's not how I practice semen retention. Um, I still like to be intimate with my partner, but you know, it's up to you how you go about doing that, okay? So I'm going to start with maybe how to find a woman that is going to support you um, in this um, space in your life, right? In the semen retention space. Uh, obviously, you know, if you're dating women that are promiscuous and that are, um, that don't respect themselves and don't take care of themselves, uh, you're, those aren't going to be the women that are going to be supporting you in spiritual pursuits in life, any kind of spiritual pursuit, whether that be semen retention or Christianity or whatever other religion you're involved in, right? Um, those kinds of women are mostly um, addicted to little um, pleasures, right? And aren't going to have the mental um, capacity or the emotional stability to support a man um, in these kinds of uh, pursuits, right? Uh, we need a very special woman that's going to support us fully, right? And not only support us, but help us and maybe guide us um, in the direction that we're trying to move as men. And whether that direction is practicing semen retention or, you know, accomplishing our goals in life or, you know, getting good into fitness, right? You want a woman that's gonna be there to support you no matter what, that's loyal to you no matter what. Okay, and you're not gonna find those women at the bars, okay? You're not gonna find those women, you know, in all these places where people go to hook up, right? You're just not gonna find them there, okay? And I've already kind of brushed over how to find high quality women and you can go watch that video if you want to. But, you know, generally high quality women are going to be met either in person or, you know, sometimes it can be on dating apps, but generally dating apps attract the worst kind of people, I'm not gonna lie, but you can also find very good people on them as well, you know? But you know, generally dating apps are gonna give you a bad experience, okay? More often than not, you're gonna find the kinds of women that are high quality, that are good women, good-hearted women, and um, you know, women with morals, and uh, you know, uh, guidance in life and goals, real life goals. You're gonna find those women generally in person, okay? Generally, you're not gonna meet those women on Tinder, or on Bumble, or on wherever. Generally, now I'm not saying it's impossible, it can happen, right? Anything can happen, right? But if you're searching for love, generally, you know, dating apps aren't gonna be the place. It can happen though, it's happened to many people, right? But that being said, your best bet is gonna be meeting a woman in person, you know, just naturally out and about, going about your day, doing, and then you just go approach or whatever. And I don't really support the whole cold approach thing. I think it's kind of ridiculous, uh, the red pill cold approach that they, 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 they seem to support so well. But you know, every once in a while it, it can work, right? But um, I just mean like through friends or through, you know, probably not work. You don't want to um, generally date through work. That tends to um, not work out very well. But you know, you can meet women through friends or through friend groups or through family or whatever. Those are going to be where you find those high quality women, okay? Not at bars and generally not on dating apps, right? So, you know, on to um, how to navigate uh, being in a relationship while also being on semen retention or attempting to be on semen retention. Now, I'm going to start with saying this, that it is okay to ejaculate when you're in a committed relationship, okay? Ejaculating is not gonna kill you, okay? It's not gonna make the world end, right? If it does happen, 
it's okay, not a big deal, right? At least you're not addicted to porn and jerking off all over yourself, okay? That's what we're trying to get away from, right? Now, the next step would obviously be, you know, to take some time alone and remove your porn addiction if you're addicted to porn and not involve a woman in your life during that time. But once you get to a point where you're stable in life, then you begin to maybe bring a woman into your space, right, and into your life to enrich your life, to bring more value to your life, right? If a woman's not bringing more value to your life, there's absolutely zero point in having any kind of communication or contact with her, right? So, once you're in a relationship, right, and you're practicing semen retention and you have been able to gain control over your sexuality and yourself as a sexual being and not be a dirty little perverted um, guy, right, and not view women as flesh but as these spiritual creatures that can add to your life, spiritual human beings, right, that can add to your life, once you get this mindset, you know, then you can bring a woman into your life, okay? And once you do that, okay, maintaining that relationship alongside of semen retention can be done basically two ways, right? You can do pure celibacy where you just don't have any physical contact at all, no sexuality involved whatsoever, um, and you both basically just, you know, contribute to each other's lives in other ways, right? Um, add value to each other's lives in other ways, um, which can be done in so many different ways. You can learn how to do um, sports together. You can learn how to backpack. You can um, learn how to draw. You can learn how to create together. You can go enjoy life together. You can spend life, spend, spend your time on this earth with somebody, you know, that's adding to it, right? Or you can try um, NEO sex, which is non-ejaculatory orgasm sex, right? Where you basically control your orgasms, your ejaculation, um, and do not release, okay? Now, this is a very controversial topic um, among the semen retention community. A lot of people seem to think that, you know, it's just impossible to do this or it's just always gonna be, you know, the wrong way to do it, right? They think it's the wrong way to do it. They think it's gonna affect you negatively or you're not gonna get the same benefits that you normally would from semen retention if you're being sexually active and not releasing. But I disagree from my personal experience the only thing I would agree with is that it is in, uh, basically an, an inevitable ejaculation if you're practicing non-ejaculatory orgasm sex, right? You're gonna ejaculate at some point on accident. It's gonna happen. But if you can remove that guilt from yourself and give yourself a little bit of credit for um, becoming uh, non-addicted to pornography and masturbation um, and not guilt trip yourself when you accidentally ejaculate with your partner, then it's totally fine. Now, this NEO sex is not for the people practicing semen retention who kick themselves in the head when they ejaculate on accident, right? Or when they ejaculate on purpose. This is not for those people, okay? If you're going to have uh, your mental health affected when you ejaculate one time in, in three months, Non-ejaculatory orgasm sex is not for you, okay? You should practice pure celibacy because if you're gonna guilt yourself so hard for um, ejaculating that it's just not even worth it. It's not worth your mental health to even try non-ejaculatory orgasm sex. You should just practice pure celibacy. But if you don't guilt yourself and you can accept um, a few failures in life, you know, practicing non-ejaculatory orgasmic sex with a partner that you love can be an amazing experience and I highly recommend it. And to add to that, I don't think necessarily that it does take away from the semen retention experience from my own personal antidote, right? Now, a lot of YouTubers would definitely disagree with me, okay? But, you know, I think that the feminine is meant to be in our lives, okay? I think that sexuality is meant to be in our lives, but we as human beings just abuse the hell out of everything, right? Including our sexuality. And we, we, we pervert everything. We make everything, you know, in excess. We do everything in excess, okay? But if you gain control over your sexuality and you want to have a partner in life, a female partner, or a male partner, like I said, do whatever you want to do. I'm not here to judge you, okay? Then, you know, you can have a sex life and have sexuality with your partner um, and also practice semen retention. It's completely possible, okay? I'm a living, walking specimen, okay? I've done it, I can do it, and I still do it, right? 
Now, I'm not saying that this is for everyone, like I said just a second ago, it's not for everybody, but it is possible, okay? It is completely possible, right? And if you wanna get into this kind of stuff, you can comment down below, just ask me any questions, I'll answer them. Um, but obviously, I don't have sex that frequently, right? I'm also maintaining my, my balance in life uh, as far as sexuality goes and as far as anything goes, as you should as a human being, balance is incredibly important in our lives, okay? So I'm not having sex every day. I'm not even having sex every other day, right? I'm moderating it, okay? And I'm also practicing semen retention, right? So when I do have sex and I have non-ejaculatory sex, okay, I'm still on semen retention and I'm still maintaining all those benefits from keeping my seed inside of my body. Now, some may argue that while having sex, you come a little bit, even if you don't ejaculate fully, right? And whether that's true or not, well, it is true, sorry. You do have pre-cum and cum does leak when you have sex, but it's a negligible amount. And let me tell you, I've practiced semen retention on and off for the last five years and I've experimented in every different way besides, you know, watching pornography and masturbating because I know exactly the outcome of that it is detrimental to the male health and the male mind and the male spirituality. But I've, I've, I've experimented with sex over the years, okay, and doing semen retention and I don't feel any difference when I'm practicing non-ejaculatory orgasms than when I'm just practicing pure celibacy. I'm just gonna say it, I don't notice any energy level difference. I don't experience any different connection to the world, to the, to the God mind, right? I don't experience any difference, right? But that's my own personal experience. You need to go figure out for yourself what works. All I know is that you need to practice semen retention if you're a man and you need to stop watching pornography and stop masturbating. This is your boy Kyle Little. If you enjoyed today's video, please subscribe to the channel, please like the video, and comment down below if you have any questions about non-ejaculatory orgasms and I will answer them. All right, this is your boy Kyle Little, signing out.